The Great War, which ended in 1918, was the war to end all wars, as most of the civilized world was engaged in a worldwide conflict. People had no idea that 21 years following the end of the Great War, battle lines would be redrawn and an even greater war would ensue, known as World War II. There was a, a very definite uh, divided opinion in, on the part of the people of the United States. Some people wanting to stay completely out of the war and others thinking we should get involved. And that was uh, the big uh, discussion point. But when the nature of the attack on Pearl Harbor changed that almost completely to one of where we must get involved, we must, uh, and so the attitude was changed, uh, as I say, almost completely by that event. I really went into the service uh, not, with, with very little expectations about that I, I felt like I better do what, I'd been, what I was told to do. I really thought that I would probably wind up going overseas somewhere. But that was not the case. I wound up in an air transport command that was training pilots. And later, uh, an air transport unit uh, out at San Francisco, or north of San Francisco, there at Hamilton Field, they were involved in running what I'd call as a, a, a military airline between Tokyo and San Francisco. They kept flights going, and I, I started on one trip to Tokyo and got to Kwajalein Island out in the Pacific, and there was a storm between us there, a typhoon between us and our next stop. So they assigned us to an airplane. They wanted to get out of Kwajalein Island, sent us back to Hawaii, and then we were assigned to bring another plane back to San Francisco, and when we got back, I, I had gotten enough points I was ready for discharge, so I never did make it to Tokyo. Being on the farm and producing crops and food, uh, you got a special condition on that, in that rationing and for fuel and that sort of thing, so our family didn't suffer that much from it as much as, as people that were not on the farm. They had some inconvenience that was caused by, mainly by rationing. It had quite an impact on things, and, and the speed limit, unbelievably, was reduced to 35 miles an hour to conserve fuel. Today, that would be, well, they'd probably use more fuel because cars are designed to give better mileage at a, at a higher rate of speed than that, but not at that time. On the farm, we, we were up and busy doing chores and, and so forth early in the morning, uh, oftentimes about daylight, whatever time that was. We'd get out and milk the cows and feed the horses and, take care of the chores, feed the hogs. And uh, meanwhile, the, my sisters and mother were preparing a big breakfast for us. And that breakfast was unusual in, in to, by today's standards. It might include the, uh, chicken fried steak and gravy for breakfast. But then get up and go back to the field until sundown or so. so that was about a routine day. So when I went in service, someone would step in down to the end of the barracks and blow a whistle, and that means the alarm's going off, you get up. <laughs> well, that wasn't, that wasn't entirely new to me. It was a little earlier than I was used to, but I was used to getting up and get, getting on with the day right away. So it didn't, it didn't uh, have that much negative impact or anything on me.